And so, first of all, the atonement is limited in its efficacy. You can't tell people that God loves them unless you know they're elect. You can't tell them that they can be saved because if Jesus didn't die for them, then no provision has been made for them. And so not anyone can be saved. Only the elect can be saved. When he writes the law in my heart and mm. draws me to himself and puts the fear of God in mm. me, I think he bought my conversion, mm. which means he didn't do that for everybody. Mm -hmm. There is a false doctrine out there. It's called Calvinism. All right, Calvinism basically deletes certain Bible verses by their theological structure, by their writings from their professors and their great men so-called. And a lot of these men are not Christian. They are Calvinists. Calvinism comes from the Catholics. The Catholics are a bunch of pagans. And today, Christianity is being split by Calvinists who prop up this straw man argument and they say, oh, well, you believe in eternal security? Well, you're not, you know, or they'll, they'll, they'll argue, oh, you think God doesn't pick people to go to hell? And they want to divine and put you on, a, oh, you're an Arminian. No, you're a Calvin. No, how about I'm a Christian? Yeah. I would say both of those camps are completely unsaved with the doctrine that they teach. Look what it says here. It says, for this is good and acceptable in the sight of God, our Savior, who will have all men to be saved and come unto the knowledge of the truth. Amen. Listen, God saved you from your sins. All men, all sins, forever. It's not something you can lose. When a Calvinist opens their mouth to spread their doctrine, beware. Be warned. Listen. There's the average Joe that sits in their church and it doesn't make sense. They don't understand. You know, but, but any, any Calvinist prophet out there, I would say he's probably not saved. He's probably a heretic. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, in chapter 4 of, of 1 Timothy, he says, because that we trust in the living God who is the Savior of all men, especially of those that believe. First, I mean, the most famous verse, John 3.16, whosoever believeth, has everlasting life. It's that simple. But a Calvinist does not believe that. Oh, well, you can't look, you have to look at it through our theological structure and you got to look, come on, man. They don't even know, if you go back to the Greek, you can eliminate that word and you can delete this verse and you can forget what God has said about it being a free gift that lasts forever by putting your faith in Jesus Christ alone. They don't believe that. They'll say it's grace, but when they say grace, they mean the doctrines of grace. Well, what's that? Well, that's what John Calvin taught. That God picked you to go to heaven and there's nothing you can do to refuse it. Strange, strange doctrine. Another verse that they ignore. The Lord is not slack concerning His promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to us word, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. God wants us all to come to the knowledge of Him and understand that it's not by our own works that we're saved by the, the finished work of Jesus Christ. Oh, wait, not willing that any should perish. They teach God chose people just to go to hell. He created certain people and said, nope, you're going to hell. There's nothing you can do about it. That is a lie. There is something you can do about it. You can put your trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Look at verse number 6. He says, who gave himself for a ransom for all to be testified in due time. So he says, God our Savior here, He wants all men to be saved. He gave Himself for all men to be testified in due time. God died for the people that will reject them. The Lord Jesus Christ loved the world so much that He laid His life down even for the people that choose to go work for the devil. He died for their sins as well. That's true love. And Calvinism does not understand that. And listen, John Calvin was a, a disgusting reprobate. There are things about this guy that just blows my mind that any Christian would follow such a person. Especially when you see who John Calvin was following, yet another disgusting reprobate. And I would say any prophet of Calvinism today is probably a, false, a, a reprobate as well, like Piper or, or White, or Dr. White, unsaved, yep. heretic. Working for the devil. Sproul, R.C. Sproul. Dude, this guy's done so much damage to Christianity. People don't even know what the Bible says, but they quote him. It's absurd. John MacArthur's the same thing. He is the sneakiest devil that I've seen in our generation. He, I, think, I think he's worse than Billy Graham. 
Because even the unsaved can look at Billy Graham and see there's a problem. But I've seen so many people deceived by John MacArthur not understanding uh, how he perverts the gospel. Even this Pastor Trendy, uh, Jeff Durbin, that wears skinny jeans. Calvinist. If you see his crap on YouTube, don't click on it. Don't watch it. He's going to waste your time. He wants to pretend to be like the world and then just throw a bone to Jesus real quick. The things he does are very blasphemous. He rejects the Scriptures. He rejects the Gospel because his God is the God of Calvinism, which is not the Lord Jesus Christ. They've chosen John Calvin over Jesus Christ. Let him be accursed.